Uh, let's get to work. Special counsel Robert Mueller is expected to make his final report to the Justice <clears throat> Department soon. And yesterday, President Trump made another lengthy effort to discredit the former FBI director, suggesting Trump's own victory in the 2016 election disqualifies an investigation. In January of 2017, the intelligence community assessed that Vladimir Putin and the Russian government aspired to help President Trump's chances in the 2016 election. And the FBI's then director, James Comey, revealed an open investigation into Russia's ties to Trump allies, an inquiry for which the president said he fired Comey. The DOJ appointed a special counsel to pick up the investigation in clearly defined terms, along with any matters that may arise <coughs> from it. But yesterday, President Trump said he doesn't, quote, get it. It's interesting that a man gets appointed by a deputy. He writes a report. Uh, you know, never figured that one out. A deputy, because of the fact that the attorney general uh, didn't have the courage to do it himself, a deputy that's appointed appoints another man to write a report. And now I have somebody writing a report that never got a vote? It's called the Mueller report. So explain that, because my voters don't get it, and I don't get it. Let it come out. Let people see it. That's up to the attorney general. But it's sort of interesting that a man out of the blue just writes a report. I know that he's conflicted, and I know that his best friend is Comey, who's a bad cop. I had a nasty business transaction with him uh, and other things. The day before, he was retained to become special counsel. I told him he wouldn't be working at the FBI. And then the following day, they get him for this. I don't think so. Um, along with his gruesome comments about John McCain, I mean, really, mm. we didn't know it could get lower. He's flailing. It appears he's just swinging well, out in the wind. <clears throat> I mean, I have. Is he stressed out? You know, what is I've happening? spent half a century watching people say things in Washington, D.C. Um, I've got to say, those were some of the dumbest words to ever tumble out of a politician's <laughs> mouth I mean, it's, that I've it's ever just... heard. He doesn't... Homer Simpson. He doesn't get it that somebody who is unelected <clears throat> could write a report. He doesn't get no, it, which means it. he doesn't understand... <laughs> How the, how the judicial branch no, he can't, he works. Can't, can't, can't. No, he doesn't that, understand how the judicial branch works, man, because the Supreme Court of the United States defines what the Constitution of the United States is every single day by writing things, writing things despite the fact they don't have to have Russians, uh, like by bots or by ads on Facebook he to, watch, help them, could to help them get their seats on the Supreme Court. Now, that's what Donald Trump does. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about getting Russians to help influence elections in Wisconsin and Michigan. And yet, Donald Trump is baffled by the concept of unelected constitutional players in a Madisonian democracy. And baffled by the idea of someone writing a report, which you can understand because he would never read a report. <laughs> that was such a weird performance. Everything he said was wrong. He had no business dispute with Mueller. Mueller was not offered the FBI job and didn't, you know, um, di or was not told he wouldn't get the FBI job and then is some angry, <clears throat> vengeful person afterwards. Um, and this idea that there's, you know, a deputy hires a man who writes a report that's the way the justice system works. Um, there are the, the, the point of our justice system is there are people who are not accountable to the president, who don't, you know, who, who aren't supposed to follow politics, who aren't supposed to follow the president's whims, but who are supposed to look at the facts and the law and make decisions based on that. And that's what he has been hostile to throughout this investigation. He has always been hostile to the idea that there isn't someone at the Justice Department who is loyal to him. You saw it come up again in his remarks there where he says, you know, because Sessions recused himself. He's been, he has been just flailing about since the beginning of this investigation because there wasn't anyone at DOJ who would do what he wanted to 
and just quash this thing from the from the get-go. So, Jonathan Amir, I understand from your reporting that despite the fact that this report is going to, to reflect the fact that the president's national security advisor is now a fel convicted felon, that his campaign manager is now a convicted felon, that his longtime attorney is now a convicted felon, that his assistant campaign manager is now a convicted felon. Ah. I just I could keep so going. Many. I will just stop at Witches. those. I'll just stop at those four. But also, we could also say his long-term political advisor is on his way to becoming a convicted felon. Despite this, despite having the most corrupt administration in the history of American politics, your reporting suggests that Donald Trump's going to try to quote weaponize the Mueller report after it comes out. So let's be clear. No one knows exactly what's in the report. We don't. We anticipate it's going to be soon, but its findings are not yet known to any of us. Uh, also, to be clear, this is not a witch hunt, as you just detailed, Joe. They're the charges and indictments speak for themselves. But there is a growing sense from the president and people close to him. Yes, of course, as you saw from those remarks yesterday. As frustrated as he is that this special counsel probe exists to begin with, and he feels like it is a stain on his presidency, one he feels he does not deserve, uh, that. There has been an anticipation among a broad swath of Americans that the Mueller report would end with a dramatic image, something like the president being led from the Oval Office in handcuffs. And he, he, that, of course, is not expected to actually happen. And there's a growing belief in Trump's circle that there isn't going to be some smoking gun here. There isn't going to be a bombshell, a new bombshell development in the final report whenever it is issued and whenever it is released. So, therefore, he's going to try to hold it up as an example of government overreach. Try to say, hey, look, I gave this to you for two years. I didn't interfere. I didn't fire him. And it didn't prove that I did it. And we, of course, can take exceptions to some well, of that. But, as you but, just but, but Jonathan, again, though, I mean, right? we, we've listed that four or five of his key players from the campaign are in jail or are going to jail. And also, Robert Mueller, uh, at least a couple of months ago, had made a tidy little profit on this investigation. Right. He is going to play on the ideas of perception, not reality here, which of course oh. will not be the first time that he's done this. <laughs> and it's probably not shocking to anyone listening or watching that he's going to try to claim victory even when perhaps there isn't one. Yeah. And yes, he's going to suggest it's overreach. It cost too much. It went on too long. And perhaps most crucially, he's going to say this. Look, you had your shot at me. There's not this ironclad proof that I personally colluded. So therefore, what are the Democrats still doing on the House? He's going to suggest that, according to the people that we've talked to, according to our reporting, that he's going to take this, he's going to, whether it's on Twitter or on a rally stage, and say, look, the Mueller report was your chance to prove this. It didn't happen. If the Democrats are still investigating me, that's proof that that's just purely partisan. That's what matters. <coughs> Politics, not the facts. Will, yeah, Willie, I wonder, how, how long was the Benghazi investigation? Oh when gosh. did they finally stop the Benghazi investigation? It went on Last for most, most after, of the president's second after the, term. After yeah. the election. Yeah. After yeah. Hillary Clinton had lost, they finally gave up the ghost. On, so they really, Republicans have absolutely no room to whine or complain about anything. And unlike the Benghazi investigation, people are getting sent to jail here. And after, it, again, it, 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 quoting Churchill, uh, uh, this is not the beginning of the end. This is the end of the beginning. Yeah. There are going to be a lot of prosecutors, especially in the Southern District of New York, that are going to look at his report, and then they're probably going to pick up prosecutions. And maybe waiting for the president when he leaves office in a couple of years or in six years. Do you think Donald Trump thinks that he's ever going to get these legal problems behind him, or does he think that the sins of the last 30 years will follow him oh, I think for the knows. rest of his life? I think he knows. I think that's why he's worried about it. And Julia, you saw his efforts there to, again, one more time, discredit Bob Mueller. It's just not working. If you look at the polls, they, he was appointed Bob Mueller as a man of integrity and a man who has served this country throughout his life. He's not some partisan hack. He's a Republican. He led the FBI. We know all these things. And yet the president still is trying to undermine it and soften the ground for when the report does drop that he can say at least consider the source that this was some partisan witch hunt. That's right, Willie, and I don't usually weigh in on the president's strategies here. I stay on the judicial side of this, but I was just thinking about what Joe said earlier about politics being in contrast. I think that's really difficult for
for this president because we haven't even seen Robert Mueller since he was appointed. He has been totally mm -hmm. silent. There are no leaks out of his office. As much as we all might try to get more information about what's in this report, it's really unknown. We think it's coming any day now. We don't have a specific point. And I think that's starting to really get under the president's skin. So we're seeing him lash out in some ways that are kind of even less um, logical than we've seen in the past, if that's possible. <clears throat> and so he's starting to take these hits. Another thing he <clears throat> said yesterday that, that really just didn't even make a hit on the truth <laughs> uh, bullseye at all is whether or not the president has any control over what we see in the public. He says, I think they should release everything. Well, that's not only not up to the president. It's really not up to Robert Mueller. It's up to the attorney general, William Barr. He will get this report from Mueller, and then it's up to him what goes to Congress. We'll have to write a brief report, and then how much is actually made public. So the idea that the president is giving us some kind of gift by saying, release the whole thing, I have nothing to hide, really just doesn't hold a lot of water for me. You know, Matt, um, people close to the investigation, not the Mueller investigation, but uh, people in the Senate, the House, have, have uh, many have said that Don Jr. committed perjury. Robert Mueller certainly, if he did, certainly knows that to be the case. I've heard from the beginning that Mueller is very conservative with a small C, that he's not going to swing for the fences. He's going to report, he's going to get the information out, and then he's going to let the appropriate authorities do what they do with it. Is, is indicting uh, the son of a sitting president too bold of a move from, for Robert Mueller? Would he leave that to somebody else? Or, or is there any reason why he would hold back on indicting Don Jr. if in fact he did commit perjury. No, if he committed a crime, I think Bob Mueller would indict him. And I think that is that is, you know, there are some pieces of this investigation that I think he could refer to other prosecutors. We've seen him do it. You could see like say the Elliot Broidy scandal, you know, about the you know working for the UAE and influence pedal, and you could refer that to another prosecution team. That's a lot to ask. It's a lot of weight to ask a US attorney to carry to ask them to indict the president's son. I think you would see Mueller do that himself. If, however, I, I think one of the things that people are missing about the conclusion of this investigation, if he looks at, say, Don Jr. or Jared Kushner and decides what they did was really terrible, they came right up to the line mm -hmm. of committing a crime and didn't cross that line, I don't think we should expect to see that in a public report. That was the mistake that I think we all agree Jim right. Comey made. Exactly. Uh, talking about Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump Jr. is a private citizen. Jared Kushner is a, you know, works for the government but is not an elected official, could be indicted. So. If he has yes. evidence about them that doesn't right. quite, quite rise to criminality, he shouldn't be talking about it publicly. Very different ballgame when it comes to the president who by and, DOJ's own admission or DOJ's conclusion can't be indicted. And by the way, Julie, I mean, let's underline that right now when, when somebody came out earlier and said that we, I think Rosenstein said we don't need complete transparency. Mm -hmm. That's just being consistent with what we all said after James Comey decided not to indict Hillary Clinton but then indicted her politically. You either indict them or you keep your mouth shut. Yeah, and Rod Rosenstein, I think, has been trying to kind of tamper expectations about what we can see in this report. This isn't some tell-all that's going to air all the president's dirty laundry and then not lead to a criminal indictment, uh, especially given the high bar and the fact that many think you can't even indict a sitting president. And Rod Rosenstein, of course, is the sharpest critic of Jim Comey's decision, and he used that in his memo that justified mm -hmm. the firing of Jim Comey, that you can't come out and tar someone's reputation when you're not referring them for criminal prosecution, because that's not the way the Justice Department works. Their tool is to prosecute. Their tool right. is not just to bring up bad wrongdoings someone has done. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.